What comes to mind when you think about the 1920s? Of course, you think about flappers, speakeasies, and jazz. But I mean the aesthetic. Okay, so let's go out of bounds of the 20s for a second. Picture the stereotypical aesthetic of the 1950s. You probably think about something like this. You probably picture the googie style of buildings. Or maybe, if you're more informed about artistic trends, you might picture something more in the mold of mid-century modern. But anyways, this is probably what you think about when you picture 1950s aesthetic, right? So what about the 1920s? You probably think of something like this. This kind of illustration and style of font are so associated with the 1920s, though I think on a more subconscious level than all the other stuff, like music and social change. So what is this? Well, it's called Art Deco. But why was it so popular, and how was it influenced by society and culture at that time? Let's find out. Before I really get into this, I do want to say that I'm not really well versed in art or style or design or anything like that, so a lot of my observations are just my own opinion, and it may not fit with what more informed people say about it, though I did do quite a bit of research on it. Anyways, let's continue. In the 20s, Europe, though still recovering from the ravages of the First World War, was still seen as the center of Western culture to most Americans. And the trends of fashion, art, and architecture still largely came from European cultural capitals, specifically Paris. And it was there that Art Deco was born. The moment that the Art Deco movement really got started can be traced back to an art exhibition in Paris set up by the Society of Decorative Artists in 1925. The exhibition was also sponsored by the French government. Art Deco was the direct successor to the Art Nouveau style that had been in vogue in the pre-war era in France. And the post-war era was characterized by not only a loss of innocence, but also rapidly advancing technology. The style quickly spread around Europe, notably Weimar Germany, before making its way into the United States, where it was especially embraced by the wealthy and the middle class. World War I had seen technology advance at an unprecedented rate as European nations competed with each other. After the war, this technology was used for commercial purposes, creating machines on a grand scale and putting out more and more consumer products. This new facet of post-war society was instrumental in shaping the Art Deco style. So let's take a moment to analyze some examples of Art Deco. When I see it, I see not only the influence of a new, modern society, but also more traditional aspects of Western art forms, which seems to me to be influenced by the trend of exoticism found throughout the 1920s. So what I see is a merging of old and new, with emphasis on the new. In fact, it looks so new that it almost borders on futuristic when we take into account the time period we're talking about. And indeed, we can see this influence in the famous futuristic 1927 film, Metropolis. We'll talk about that film later, though. For now, let's look at the characteristics of Art Deco. Some of the motifs really seem like they're influenced by ancient art, like ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics or Greek pottery or something like that. Quoting from an art website, the Art Deco aesthetic emphasized machine age streamlining and sleek geometry. And you can see sleekness as being very popular during the 20s in the fashion world as well, but I won't go into that for this video. And geometry is very important to the Art Deco style. Very unique, stylized, geometric patterns are one of its main characteristics. This often took the form of triangles. So here are some images showing some Art Deco pieces with very pronounced geometric patterns. Rectangles, often seen in long, thin forms, seem to have been used to emphasize height or width, while triangles and circles made up the middle areas. But this is just my casual observation. So let's go back to the film Metropolis from 1927. First, just look at the opening of the film. The title sequence is itself a masterpiece of Art Deco in motion. In this scene, we can see some Art Deco style geometric patterns on the wall, while the layout, including the stairs, looks somewhat like classical Greek architecture. And in this scene showing the factory, we can see some very deliberate framework here that looks very much in the style of Art Deco. On each side, there are two big circles, while three main rectangles in the middle and other smaller rectangles in the sides draw our eyes upward. In this shot, we see the futuristic city. The connection to Art Deco is much less obvious in this one, but the modern or futuristic look still seems to fall into that category. And note the building on the left that has a layered triangular shape. This layered motif can be found in other prominent works of Art Deco as well, which we will talk about now. One of the most famous examples of Art Deco architecture is the Chrysler Building in New York City. The design of the Chrysler Building began around 1927 or 1928, during the time when Art Deco was in vogue in New York City. The Art Deco style can especially be seen at the top of the building's exterior and the decorations inside the building. At the top of the Chrysler Building, we can see many of the main characteristics of Art Deco, 
triangular, circular, and rectangular geometric patterns, a modern or futuristic look, and a machine-like metallic appearance representing new technology. And on closer inspection, there are various metallic-looking accents and decorations that adorn the crown of the building, most notably the eagle heads, which look like they're straight out of Metropolis. And the inside of the building reveals even more Art Deco style. Like the entrance, for example. Look at those ascending and descending rectangles and the metallic doors with triangular accents at the bottom and the two cross bars. And the elevator area. Here's what I meant earlier about the influence of ancient art and motifs. That design really reminds me of ancient art, but with a modern twist. The top part looks like a headdress on an ancient Egyptian sarcophagus, and the color scheme is reminiscent of ancient Greek art, like that found on pottery. While the Chrysler building was opened in 1930, it had taken a long time to build, of course, and so the design is really a reflection of late 1920s design. There are so many other little details on the interior of this building that perfectly express the Art Deco style, but I won't go into all of them. Art Deco found its way into many kinds of places in the United States, such as other big buildings, homes, and movie palaces, though it was certainly not exclusive to architecture. It could also be found in magazines, sculptures, films, furniture, jewelry, consumer goods, you name it. The Art Deco style was used to evoke grandeur and sophistication. It took classical influences from the ancient world and all of the mystique it evoked and mixed them with the metallic machinery of the modern age to create something conflicting yet very pleasing to the eye. It should come as no surprise that Art Deco was mostly confined to the upper and middle classes who could afford such new stylish designs and it was a way for them to show off their wealth, sophistication, and modernness, though it would become more mainstream in the following decade. Not to mention that it came from Paris and other centers of European culture, which made it somewhat exotic and irresistibly fashionable. Art Deco really only appeared in its full developed form in the second half of the 1920s, and it continued on and survived the Great Depression. In fact, its peak was in the early 1930s, and it remained popular until the late 1930s. And for that reason, it's probably more associated with the early and mid-1930s than it is with the 1920s. And it, just like all trends in fashion and design, eventually faded away from popularity. But why does Art Deco grab our attention so much? Well, for me, it's the straight, sleek, geometric designs, like this one, that really draws me in. And when we get to see 1920s Art Deco in color, it looks really classy and sophisticated. Not to mention that we now have the ability of hindsight and we can feel all the other cultural associations and vintage aesthetic that come with it. This video ended up being a lot longer than I had anticipated. I'm not really an artsy person, but I got really absorbed into researching this and looking through all the photos of Art Deco in the 20s. And honestly, my own comments and opinions that I wrote for this video came out of nowhere. They just came spilling out. So those were truly my first impressions. Well anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something about the Art Deco movement. I know I certainly did. Well, that's all for now, all you sheiks and gals out there, but stay tuned for more tales from the Jazz Age.